Good morning, degenerates, and welcome to another episode of Boring Crypto IO, place where I read you the boring crypto news every morning, Monday through Friday, just so you don't have to. My name is not important. I am your host, guys. Please smash that like button, turn on the bell for notifications, subscribe to the channel, and let's get into this exciting Monday. Guys, Brazil's largest bank, Itau Unibanco, launches Bitcoin trading. That was rough. Bitcoin tops 40k for the first time in 19 months. Max reports tips 125,000 in 2024. That is a ooh, maybe. I don't know, man. And last but not least, SEC faces sanction threat as judge questions debt box case accuracy. Oh no, the SEC is in trouble again. What's going to happen? Probably nothing. Ooh, big nothing burger. <laughs> Ah, uh, we'll see what that says. Okay, guys, to the market. Excitement, excitement, excitement. Current market cap, guys, right now, 1.5 trillion, 3.36 up from yesterday. Guys, Bitcoin dominance skyrocketing, 53.1% for Bitcoin. ETH dominance, 17.5. And Guay is absolutely out of control. <laughs> 58 Guay will get you that ETH transaction. Fear and greed, up to 75. Guys, will we tick into the 80s? Nobody knows. Could go up, could go down. I am that cliche YouTube quote unquote influencer, crypto influencer. Um, yeah, guys, Bitcoin, well over 40K. Congratulations if you've been holding this far. Um, like I told you guys, I, I, everyone that I'm, I'm following um, is looking for anywhere like between a 40 to 42 ish. And then a potential pullback to the low 30s. I told you if that looks like that's the case, um, I'm probably going to scale out and wait for that pullback to uh, then go back in. That is where my thought process is at. But we shall see. Um, we're going to talk about that when we get to Bitcoin. Uh, but with that being said, guys, let's just blow through the top 100, get it out of the way real fast. Because I don't think a lot of alts are looking good. But we shall see because I think all the liquidity right now is flowing to people FOMOing into Bitcoin. Um, so let's go guys bitcoin on the seven day 12.55 percent to the upside 4.53 on the day guys can't get mad at that welcome to what everyone said was not possible guys ethereum up 2.65 on the day almost 10 percent on the week congratulations let's go through the top solana down almost five percent uh probably not a bad buy what's that 66 dollars it'd be really sexy if it got down to 50. All right, let's look for the outliers. Anything over or under five, seven percent the upside for Bitcoin Cash. What the shit? Five point four one the upside for Crow. Seven point seven five for ICP guys the upside. Five point three nine is the downside for Rune. Eight point six five to the upside for Near Protocol. Holy shit, Stacks is flying off the handle. Twenty four point three three to the upside on the day. Over fifty percent on the week congratulations if you're holding stacks terra luna classic good god 25 percent on the day almost 100 percent on the week what do people know that i don't know probably a lot because i'm not that smart inj looking a little soft right now guys down 7.25 on the day uh 5.28 to the downside for synthetics Ordy up 22.68 on the day, 104 on the week. Congratulations if you're in that. There it. That was in that project or in there at the same time, in case you were wondering. Guys, 12.57 the upside for FXS. 5.73 the upside for CFX. 15.74 for more Luna Trash. I mean, not saying that trash can't make you money, but you get my point. 6.19 to the downside for DYDX. Uh, 5.25 to the upside for Pepe, guys. Uh, there's a there's a Terra that's down. 10% to the downside for Terra Classic USD. USTC is the name. And guys, that is your top 100. Um, if you're making money, congratulations. Uh, some scam wicks on some some uh, blue chip altcoins, guys, in the top 10. I'll look at that briefly, but Bitcoin, 4-hour. So here's what I have to say. Um, 
Yeah, where do, where do I start? Okay. We, we broke out, guys. We broke out of this ascending channel to the upside. We ripped. Blew through 39. Um, guys, we were actually really following uh, my idea line here. Um, almost to a T. Went all the way up into it. Came back down. And we ranged for like, I thought we'd range for a couple of days. Like, like maybe like, maybe like four days. We ranged for like a day. <laughs> and then it ripped, broke out of the channel, hit 39, we'll call it 40. Came back down and flipped the top of the channel into support. And then last night to this morning, we just flew guys. We, we, we ripped in Bitcoin, which is what I was expecting, but I just expected to take a little bit longer. So what we're gonna do right now um, if you're new to the channel, unfortunately, we're going to get rid of this. Um, I think this is done. It already did what I wanted to. It just happened sooner. Um, that was my bullish scenario. So what we're going to look at now is, if you've been following for the last few weeks, you know that I said, if we break to like 42-ish, there's a potential that I'm probably going to scale out and wait for a pullback to the low 30s. Because again, that's what I'm hearing. And I, I can see on the charts why people would expect that. Um, there is no guarantee Bitcoin actually could continue just to absolutely rip faces for however long we don't know. It'll, it's always going to do whatever the hell it wants to do. So don't ever, um, think that it won't. Uh, but here's what I'm going to be looking for. Okay. Um, don't look at the, the volume. Um, I always say this wrong. The VRVP. I always say the VPVR. I don't know. I'm, I'm dumb. Can I tell you? Uh, right now because there's on the it's based off of what uh, uh price action you're looking at on the chart and there's a clearly there's a what looks like a low volume node here because there's nothing else in the chart but what i want you guys to see is what i'm going to be looking for to start scaling out if basically if i start seeing weakness in the charts right now this doesn't look i mean we're overextended for sure but i'm not seeing like anything that that's like showing at least on the four hour right now let's look at the one hour I'm just seeing stabilization. I'm not seeing anything that leads me to believe that we're, we're starting to lose strength, right? Uh, maybe a little bit on the on the one hour. But this could rip back up. Again, we could find a, bot, a local bottom right here. Right around... Expand this just a little bit. I'm really zoomed out. Sorry, guys. See this wick right here? We could find a, a local bottom here. Just around 41.36. We'll call it 41.4. Um, we could start seeing this range right here. Now, if we start losing that, that's when I'm going to start. If we roll over and we start losing that, that's when I'll start getting bearish. But I want you guys to see something. Um, let's see where we're at right now. Okay. And what I've done is, based off of previous price action on the decline um, from our last uh, all-time high. Um, I've pulled a, a Fibonacci retracement. And I want you guys to look at this with me. I know I'm not doing this very professionally at all. I'm taking way too long to explain this. I'm sorry. Um, I am not a professional. I'm not a good trader. This is a financial advice nor my financial advisor. I'm just some weird dude in a room. Making dumb Bitcoin YouTube videos. Okay. This is still kind of a low volume node. All right. And if we start breaking into this, we could rip all the way up to this, uh, the top of this uh, uh, Fibonacci around this 47.3 ish. But here's what I want you guys to look at. All right. As you pull the Fibonacci retracement, and I pulled this on the monthly, if I remember correct. Um, I want you to see where the hangups are. Here, give me a second, guys. I'm sorry. I really am. I should have had this all prepared. Do, 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 do. Where am I at? Nope. Cancel. That's not what I'm trying to do. I am trying to see left side there we go oh, let's see what center looks like give me a second can i see him in center yes cool all right i want you guys to see and i do percentages not decimal points i just think it's easier to look at that's me um i want you to see where these hangups are on this fib when we broke down from uh 48 ish 
we stopped right here at the 78.6. We started getting hung up here at the 61.8. We got hung up on the 50. Broke back down to the 23.60. Flipped back up to 50 and then lost it again. So what am I looking at right now is uh, I'm looking at the 50. I'm looking at the 50 to be my potential scale out. Could we blow past this? Yes. But if we get to this 50 on this 50 not, Fibonacci retracement, because we haven't been to these levels in like 19 months or something crazy like that. I'm going to start because of the bounce, because of the hang up here. I'm going to start looking at this as this is where I'm going to get out. Um, and again, unless I just see us continue to rocket ship, if we flip the all these start flipping all of these levels into support as opposed to resistance like this was here. And we did, we did So look, we broke below it, became resistance, broke below it, resistance, broke below it, resistance, went back up to it, resist it. So I'm, I'm kind of beating at a dead horse. I am looking at this to be my potential scale out. If we hit this and this 50% on this fib becomes, uh, 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 and we're going to put that line in just for and giggles since everybody's here watching right now and going, what the hell is this crazy dude talking about? He doesn't know how to chart. He doesn't know how to trade. He's an idiot. Why are we here? I am going to put this here. We're going to make it red. And that is my 50% line. And it's what I am watching right now because we are very close. I need to see this flipped into support for me to continue to see strength. If we roll over, I will, I absolutely, if we roll over and get back into this channel and and start, don't flip like 40K into uh, 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 support um, or start establishing some form of support, some strength up here, I will start scaling out and hoping for a, 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 a God, get the words out of your mouth, man. Uh, be hoping for a pullback and, and looking for another entry on most of my bags. Um, and that is what I'm doing. I don't recommend if you're look, if you're new and you've been buying from the bottom, I don't recommend doing it. This is the first time I've ever had the opportunity to do this too. It's the first time I've ever had the opportunity to buy, you know, I'm just being completely transparent. It's the first time I've ever had the opportunity to buy a bottom. You know, this is my third cycle and, uh, it, I'm, I'm in a really weird place. I was just talking to a homie of mine. It's a really good trader. He's mostly in, in traditional stuff and in, in Forex. Um, but I'm like, this is a really weird place for me. Uh, I've never bought at the bottom. So I've never had the, the opportunity just to sit on my hands and know that I'm going to do okay. But again, trying to sharpen my teeth, trying to get better at what I do here as a skill, the opportunity to potentially almost double my bags. If we have a 40% retracement, I want you guys to see something, right? So let's say I scale out. Let's say we pull back 40% from where we're at right now. Can I even do it before I'm out there? Okay. So let's say 25. That puts us right at 25, okay? And let's see. I gotta get away. Sorry, guys. Twenty-five back to where we're at right now. That forty percent turns into sixty-six point five four percent. That is almost doubling my bags. Um, do I think we're gonna go to twenty? I think we'll go to low thirties if anything. So let's. Either way, my point is I could potentially get 30 30 40 percent. <laughs> Sorry guys, I got family in town, so my head isn't in the game as much as it usually is. Not that that would change anything. You guys know I mess up my words all the time. Um. Basically, my the point is is to be able to get an extra thirty to forty percent in my bags could be life changing for for me and my family, right? And this is the first time I've ever had the opportunity to do that. I all I've ever done is waited for a bull market uh, in my past, waited until it was full blown bull, and then I just started trading. This is the first time I've ever accumulated bags at the bottom, so I'm just in a weird place where I'm like, is it worth it? Do I know? I want to do it. Trust me, I definitely want to do it. The question is, is it worth it? And it's scary. It's scary to hit that sell button. Um, 
But uh, I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, and I'm, I'm putting the rules in place. If we flip 42.5 into support, I'm good. If we if we start banging on that 42.5 ish and it starts looking like resistance, I'm going to scale out. Maybe not all, maybe not everything, but I'm going to start taking profit because I would be a fool not to. Um, again, even if I lose a little bit, if I never get back in at the right place where I want to, you're never gonna time the perfect top, you're never gonna time the perfect bottom, every recesses. But I've gotta. I, I can't let it go. I've got to. I've got to sharpen my teeth. So maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe that's what I'm doing right now is telling you guys that I'm being transparent, being vulnerable. And I'm saying, hey, I'm setting a rule in place. If we start to see weakness, I'm going to do it. But again, I'm repeating myself. Do you guys even care? Like I don't know. Um, I don't. Very few of you talk to me, so I, I maybe I'm just rambling, and you guys will be like, "What the fuck is this dude talking about?" He needs to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Either way, that's what I'm looking at, guys. I'm, I'm just in a weird place where I'm like, "Shit, do I just sit on my hands, or should I take the chance?" Right? I think I'm gonna take the chance. I think I'm telling you guys right now, I'm gonna take the chance if we start to show weakness. Uh, but that's what I'm looking at, guys. Look for a potential rollover. If we do roll over, okay. I'm done talking about myself. If we roll over and we lose about 4% and we don't hold 40K as support and bounce off of that, we're going down. It's just showing weakness in this pump. It's showing a bull trap. It's, and again, we just go back in here. Let me turn off the, the VRVP. Yeah, I said it right. Start watching our levels, guys. Um, and then maybe, you know, even at that point, if you start seeing us lose these levels, start stacking buy orders, buy orders, buy orders, buy orders, buy orders, all the way down. It is an idea. But guys, that is what I'm looking at. Congratulations if you're here. Congratulations if you're watching this, guys. This is a new yearly high. This is uh, the highest we've been over 19 months, if I remember correctly. And... <clears throat> Either this is a really, really long, overextended, uh, bearish rally, upside rally that we're going to plummet down to, which I, I don't think that is, or we're starting the bull market right now, y'all. So with that being said, I think I'm already 30 minutes into a video. I haven't done, gotten to the news yet, guys, but that is Bitcoin. Uh, just for shits and giggles, let's look at the scam wick on XRP before I get off the charts. Whoop de doo, Basil. <laughs> look at that nonsense. But look, look at what it bounced off of, guys. This is why I tell you look at previous price action, find your support and resistance levels. Uh, knowing patterns and things like that are all fucking good and dandy and they help. But your support and resistance levels, if I was looking for an entry into XRP, that was it. We scam wicked right to it. And that thing got bought up real fast. Or damn near to it. As a matter of fact. Because of my little dot right here. That line. So let's see something. That line probably should be right there. Based off of both these dots. Oh, look at that. Alright. But yeah, this is why. This is why you guys stack buyers on levels like this. Like support levels. Things like that. Because... Anytime you get like a, a long squeeze, something like that, um, stop loss hunting, margin calls, whatever, it'll tank the price really fast and you can get in some really good buys, guys. I mean, that is a, especially if you're doing leverage, that's just around a, a, a five and a half, almost 6% run, guys, that, you know, if you're doing 10x leverage, congratulations, you know? Okay, with that being said, guys, let's get on to the news and get you out of here. I've talked way too much about Bitcoin and probably didn't make any sense. And I'm sorry, but I appreciate you listening. Brazil's largest bank, Itau Unibanco, launches Bitcoin trading. Brazilian bank, Itau, 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 Unibanco has reportedly launched a cryptocurrency trading service for its clients as part of its investment platform. Brazilian bank, that thing, has launched a cryptocurrency trading service for its clients. As part of its investment platform, Reuters reported on December 4th. Uh, Itau, 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 the largest bank by assets in Brazil and one of the leading lenders in Latin America is debuting crypto trading with Bitcoin and ETH. Digital assets ahead of 
Guto Atunez reportedly said. Uh, in the futures, or in the future, the bank plans to add more cryptocurrencies for trading, he noted. It starts with Bitcoin, but our over uh, overarching strategic plan is to expand to other crypto assets in the future. Uh, and Tunis stated adding expansion would depend on regulatory developments. The move reportedly comes about a month after two local players announced they were leaving the crypto market. According to Reuters, brokerage and investment company XP recently shut down its crypto services without citing its reasons. The financial services firm PicPay, owned by a conglomerate JNF, which also controls uh, Meatpackers, JBS, side regulatory uncertainties, the two Unibanco didn't immediately respond to Coin Telegraph's request for comment. Well, good for Brazil, South America, man. They're kind of becoming uh, one of the crypto hubs. Uh, El Salvador and Venezuela, I think, are Bitcoin national currency now. Uh, cool. Moving on. Bitcoin tops 40K for its first time in, there it is, 19 months. Matrix ports, Matrix port tips 125,000 in 2024. What does that mean? Bitcoin has hit a 19 month high and matrix port predicts it will keep climbing well into next year. Uh, Bitcoin has reached the 40,000 level for the first time since late April of 2022, climbing around 2% 2 in 24 hours. Bitcoin surged from under 39.5 to strike above 40 K on December 3rd to hit a 19 month high. According to coin gecko data, it also marks a new year to date high for Bitcoin, which is up over 140% since January 1st. However, it's still down around 42% from its November 10th, 2021 all-time high of over $69,000, which is pretty standard for where we're at right now in the cycle. In a November 30th note, Matrix Port researched uh, head Marcus the Thielen. Uh, I fucking suck at names. <laughs> uh, predicted that Bitcoin would hit over 60K by April of next year and 125K by the end of 2024. Thielen said the last three crypto bear markets saw a following three-year bull cycle, and an analysis, analysis suggested another three years of this bull market, with the 2023 being... With 2023... That, uh, I'm just slaughtering everything today. Guys, with 2023 being the first year. Historically, the years when Bitcoin mining rewards uh, were halved were generally bullish. Thielen explained... explained Bitcoin is expected to again have when mining rewards are cut by 50% in mid April of 2024. Miners tended to hoard Bitcoin before each halving prices increased by 200%, which would project Bitcoin reaching 125K, Thielen said. Uh, Bitcoin's price milestone comes amid speculation that a spot Bitcoin ETF is set for approval in the United States soon, probably uh, first 10 days of November is what we're looking at. In November or uh, in January, first two days of January, in a November 28th note, Standard Chartered predicted Bitcoin could fetch six figures before the end of next year due to the earlier than expected introduction of a spot ETF in the U.S. Uh, there are 13 bidders for a spot Bitcoin ETF in the U.S. The latest from Swiss assets manager Pando Asset, which filed on November 29th, all are pending approval with the Securities and Exchange Commission and including BlackRock Grayscale have met with the agency to hash out details of their ETFs. Bloomberg ETF analysts have 90% odds that all pending ETFs bids will be approved simultaneously on January 10th. There you go. Uh, last but not least, guys, and I apologize for a long-winded video about my emotional connection to trading. Uh, the SEC faces sanctions threat as judge questions debt box case accuracy. Initially, the SEC, led by attorney um, Michael Welsh, had convinced the court to freeze debt boxes as assets, arguing the company was moving to Dubai beyond U.S. regulatory research or reach. Excuse me. United States District, District Judge Robert Shelby has cautioned the SEC lawyers hinting at a possible sanctions due to purportedly deceptive statements. In a legal action against Digital Licensing Inc., also recognized as Debtbox, a crypto company. Uh, lodged in the federal court of Utah, the SEC's legal action alleged that Debtbox deceived investors by around $50 million via the vending of unregistered securities known as node licenses. 
Uh, Judge Shelby's decision revealed notable discrepancies in the SEC's case. Initially, the SEC, led by attorney Michael Welsh, had convinced the court to freeze Debtbox's assets, arguing the company was moving to Dubai beyond U.S. regulatory reach. Subsequently, it was discovered that these assertions were inaccurate, with no bank account closures and an alleged overseas transfer of 720000 being domestic. Uh, the judge raised apprehensions regarding the behavior of the SEC lawyers, misrepresenting facts and the failure uh, of other team members to rectify these inaccuracies may have violated federal court rule 11B, which mandates evidence backed federal or factual claims. Uh, the result, this resulted in the issuance of a show cause order by Shelby requiring the SEC to provide reasons why they should not incur penalties for these actions. Uh, the intricacy of the case is underscored by a TRM Labs report corroborating the SEC's primary claim that debt box deceived investors regarding mining tokens. The defense counsel has not provided a statement on the issue and the SEC has acknowledged the order planning to respond within two week time frame specified by the judge. Uh, the milestones of the moment for legal process highlighting the complexities of cryptocurrency regulations underscoring the significance of legal responsibility in high stake financial litigation. Ripple lawyer Johnny Deaton says he is not surprised that the financial regulator has been caught lying. Well, neither am I. Adding, it appears the lawyers at the SEC have made it personal when it comes to crypto cases. With this, he calls for a subpoena against the financial watchdog. His colleagues, Ripple Chief Technology Officer Stuart Alvarati, has also listed a detailed analyst, an analyst uh, of troubling patterns seen in uh, with the SEC. I'm not surprised, guys. We know that 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 department's shady as shit, and the fact that they're not getting more heat thrown at them is kind of sad, to be honest. Let me know what you guys think. Comments down below. Let's look at uh, Bitcoin one last time before we get out of here, guys. Still holding four hour, looking okay. I mean, we're definitely seeing a cool off period. Um, let's just bounce out of time frame to see what we got. Yeah, guys, that's your that's your local bottom right there. I'm just gonna do a regular little line, nothing crazy. I don't want any too many goddamn lines on my chart. <laughs> Keep an eye on that level, guys. Sideways is good. Breaking this and not quickly getting back above it is not good. Yeah, keep your eye on that. That's where my head's at. If we roll over, I'm going to start probably looking to get out. Uh, yep, that's it, guys. That's all I got. What's ETH looking like just for shits and gigs? See, ETH already rolled over. Hmm. Gotta love it, guys. Though I, I, it's looking like flags are the pattern of this this cycle. Flag, bram. Flag, bram. Flag, bram. All right, guys. I'm just messing around now. Okay. There's Bitcoin. That's what I think. Oops. Clicking all sorts of stuff, guys. Per usual, if you enjoy the content that I provide for you here every morning on Boring Crypto IO, as well as the rambling, please, by all means, subscribe to the channel, turn on that bell for notifications, so you know when I do post videos, watch the videos, share the videos on all your social platforms, above all, if there's anything you do to spread the adoption of crypto and help grow the channel, guys, please smash that like button. It is the easiest, yet the biggest thing you could do to help us out. And outside of that, I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning, hopefully with a shorter video, guys. We're above 40K. Congratulations. I am out of here.